Hello, hi, how are you? Welcome into another episode of the Poker News Podcast. My name is Jeff Platt. Happy to be joined, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, and the upcoming World Series of Poker Circuit Grinder. That would be Chad Holloway. Chad, how are you? I am doing pretty good. As you mentioned, going to be grinding the circuit here. It is in my home state of Wisconsin in mm-hmm. Milwaukee. Yeah, Pottawatomie Casino. So it's a pretty big deal for uh, us Wisconsin folks when the circuit rolls into town. And uh, very excited about it because it works with my schedule to the point where I can play a lot of events and maybe get a ring. And you've got the full schedule plan, right? This isn't like, oh, I'm going to go maybe play one or two events. If I do well, then I'll keep firing the rest of the series. You're going you're gonna to go for it here. Yeah, this was, uh, I've known for a couple months that I'm like, you know what, let me just put in the full grind. I yeah. work my schedule, my workload so I can have some time off and actually play everything. So I, I have, uh, I think every event, every day, um, I'm going to play except for maybe the Super Bowl Sunday. Um, that's a day two of an event. So if I have to be there, good. But a problem to have. Exactly. But if not, then I, I might take that day off and, uh, you know, watch the big game. All right. Pack show lined up for you all today. Jamie Kersetter is going to join us. Of course, the recipient of the club, a couple global poker award nominations. She is friends of the both of us, uh, a bitter enemy of mine at times, but you know, I'll allow it her being on the podcast. Um, we want to hit the World Series of Poker schedule starting to take shape, a couple of WPT winners, how WPT Borgata is going. But first, Chad, in the interest of self-promotion, I would love to start with the Australian Poker Open, which you can count on Poker Go. Mike Watson on Josh Nemet, Tim Adams, Fareed Jatin, the winner so far. Three more events before Super High Roller Bowl Australia. Pretty good turnouts for this 25K that's going on right now, 47 entries. Seth Davies has a massive chip lead. And Chad, this is just one of those high roller series where you're going to see the best of the best collide. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, it's very exciting to continue the Australian theme. We've talked about it for a while here on the podcast because the Aussie Millions was going on. And now that's wrapped mm-hmm. up we get to jump right into the Australian poker open. So I'm, I'm very happy to see the poker spotlight shined on Australia for a bit longer. I mean, poker in January is, is uh, Australian based and I like it. Me too. Uh, Andras Nemet currently has the lead in the race for the Australian poker open championship and the $50,000 that goes along with that. Like I mentioned, three, three more events. And then we transition into super high roller Bowl Australia that starts on Super Bowl Sunday, but the game will be just about over by the time we kick things off on the stream. So nice transition from the Super Bowl to SHRB Australia. You can find updates on Poker Central, and of course, you can watch the stream. Chad, that's every day, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Poker Go. Well, you said it. You talked about it. The Aussie Millions they were at their final table, I think, when we talked about it uh, last week, and now, of course, we do have a winner. It was not. The legend, Eric Seidel, the Poker Hall of Famer, finished in fifth. It was Vincent Juan. They call him Wonky. He's well-known in Melbourne for winning two six-figure Royal Flush jackpots, and then he wins the Aussie Millions main event after a chop. I mean, the guy's just living the dream. Yeah, I mean, and what a nickname. You know, if you got to hear poker nicknames, Wonky (laughs) is a a pretty good one. And, uh, you know, he's the first Australian player to win it since 2017 when Sharon... Uh, Vajar Ram. I'm sure I butchered that name. But, ah, you uh, nailed it. Yeah, right. And uh, so, you know, there was a two, uh, two year gap there with Toby Lewis and Bryn Kenny taking the title, but uh, now you get it to stay, uh, get the title on home soil. And, uh, you anyway, know, it was pretty good. It was exciting. I wasn't at the Aussie Millions. I've been there many times before, but uh, I had a great time uh, sweating the action, the updates on pokernews.com, of course. And it uh, uh, seemed to me to be a pretty successful Aussie millions. I would say so really good turnout 820 entries for the main event. And you said a great job by the live reporting team. Great job by the stream, Jason Somerville, Brent Hanks, Joe Stapleton. We saw that on Twitch. Um, We saw that on poker go as well. Speaking of Twitch, a good time to shout out our friends at run it once poker, because the Twitch world has been absolutely captivated by the Galfond Challenge. Phil Galfond, the boss man over at Run It Once, taking on Venaviti, heads up PLO, 100, 200 for 25,000 hands. They played almost 4,000 hands in Chad. It has not gone particularly well for Mr. Galfond so far. Yeah, I mean, it's been a little uh, brutal. I think that he's down, uh, let's see, I, th- 327,000 euros. 
Oh man, I. Sorry, I, I, can you hear that, Jeff? Did you hear all yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. What, what was that? <laughs> I pulled you watching up watching a broadcast or I know, something. I tried were you to were we watching the stream. I pulled up the uh, an article on the Galfon Challenge just so I was prepared, and uh, the replays, <laughs> the hand replays, automatically started playing, and uh, <laughs> that was uh, Joe Stapleton making a little unannounced <laughs> guest appearance there. Oh, there we go. We love Staples. We'll allow that guest appearance. So yeah, they've played three thousand nine hundred thirty-seven hands uh Venaviti up more than three hundred twenty seven thousand dollars they have side bet this one um uh, phil giving Venaviti two to one odds on one hundred thousand euros still plenty of time for the boss man to catch up still plenty of time for you all to jump on to run at once one stop run slash pn pod for a exclusive deposit bonus for poker news podcast listeners again that is one stop run slash pn pod thank you so much to the good people at Run It Once for sponsoring this lovely podcast. So last week, we talked about the Aussie Millions final table. We also talked about a final table taking place on the World Poker Tour at the Lucky Hearts Poker Open, where Brian Altman was looking to become the first player in WPT history to win the same event twice. And Brian Altman gets the job done. He beats John Dollinger heads up. He wins almost half a million dollars. I, I don't know what more we can say, Chad, about the legend that is Brian Altman, except for the fact that he's going to come on the Poker News podcast soon. Yeah, that's right. We talked about it even before he won. We said we got to get this guy mm -hmm. on the podcast. So I did reach out to him. He is willing to come on the show. We were hoping to have him this week. But uh, he, you know what? He's busy in another WPT tournament, going deep, of course, uh, at Borgata. So uh, hopefully next week is the plan to have Mr. Brian Altman on. And very excited to talk to him about uh, winning the Lucky Hearts Poker Open again. And also a little story that really isn't out there, but I'm looking into it, is after this tournament finished, I noticed on social media that Jake Dollinger, who finished second, uh, you know, challenged Brian Altman to a heads-up match for, I think, $100,000. And well. I'm not sure the details behind it, the inspiration behind it, whether it's good-natured or a legitimate feud or what have you. I have reached out to uh, – to, Jake Dollinger, and the last update I got was, "Do you want the long, uh, the long version or the short version?" Oh, you and got then, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I said let's yeah, let's have the uh, the long version. So who knows? Well, I'll, maybe I can find out a little info and uh, have an update in next week's episode. Okay, we're looking forward to that. I mean, I certainly think that rivalries are good for the game. You mentioned Altman running deep at WPT Borgata at the time of taping this podcast, and you can find the live updates on PokerNews.com. Altman is in fourth with 143 left, uh, 1,290 entries in this one, more than a $4 million prize pool. And Chad, it seems like these Borgata mains just always receive fantastic turnouts. Yeah, I mean, the Winter Poker Open is their biggest one of the year, and this one was no exception. Massive turnouts. Uh, the WPT main event is happening right now, as you just mentioned. Another tournament that's taking place is a $5,100 buy-in high roller and this one's exciting because Borgata's has never put on a high roller event before and so you know i remember talking to some of the organizers before the series they really didn't know what to expect uh, they thought about slapping a guarantee on there mm -hmm. not sure sure if they would have gotten there or not um, and so for them to get 77 entries is a success i'll, I'll say okay. that much i know it's a success for them it's a success uh, success in my eyes um, you know, I was thinking more around the 50 number, if that. I mean, 5K is a big buy-in, so um, it's more than the main event. And uh, good, good on them. I think uh, it's setting the stage for future high roller events at Borgata. Good for them, indeed. You, you always uh, appreciate when poker rooms try something new. It'd be very easy for Borgata, based on their successful track record, to just basically run the same series over and over and over again. For them to throw a couple of these high rollers into the mix, uh, makes a lot of sense and I, th I think is really good for both the players and the poker room. And speaking of high rollers, Chad, fantastic transition. That is why you are a professional because the World Series of Poker released information today on their high roller series. Nine high rollers at the World Series of Poker this year. Now high rollers consist of 25K or higher as we run through those real quick. May 29th, we'll kick off that high roller series. 25K No Limit event, May 31st, 25K Heads Up Championship. They cap it at 64 players. Chad, do you like the change in buy-in for this tournament from 10K to 25K? And do you also like them putting a cap on the field at 64 players? You know, I honestly don't know how I feel about all, you know, for this particular event, sure. I don't mind it. I like it. Sure. Increase it. And uh, 
but you know, to have nine high roller events, I, I don't know if I've made up my mind whether or not I like that. What I do like about it, I will say, is that they at least varied it, that there's a high roller, yeah. you know, PLO, that there is the, the heads up, um, eight handed, six handed. So they've got a little flavor there. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, I'm a little concerned that it's, I don't want to say buying a bracelet, obviously, right? Sure. But not everybody can afford to play these events. Most people can't afford to play these events. So um, it is going to be one of those where you have some people, um, you know, just adding to their bracelet totals from it, because uh, it, because the field sizes will yeah, be relatively I think just, small for these. Yeah. Like, like you said, the one is going to have, is going to be capped at 64 players yeah. and uh, don't get me wrong. There's been smaller fields in the WSOP for sure. I and mean, I don't have too much of a qualm about it, but um you know, every year the WSOP is just adding more events, mm -hmm. adding more bracelets. And, mm -hmm. you know, here we've seen it in the, the high roller. And also just, um, you know, the WSOP tackled uh, lower buy-in uh, a couple of years ago, which was a huge success. And now they're going after the, the high rollers too. Um, you know, they, they seem to want to have it all to have the cake and eat it too. You know, when I think of high rollers and the high roller series, I tend to think, uh, you know, what we mentioned earlier, poker go. Poker yeah. Go putting on uh, the different high roller and kind of controlling that scene. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, how well received it is at the WSOP this year. Yeah, the World Series just wants to be home base for players of all different stake levels. And uh, there's proof of that with the schedule that is released. Uh, to, to go back to the heads up specifically, I think that has the potential to be a very prestigious event, but the way they present it to the poker community um, I think needs to change a little bit. I think when you walk in the room, when you walk in the Rio on May 31st, when this heads up no limit event starts, you should like feel the electricity in the air that the heads up tables should be very spaced out, that they should be very rail friendly, that a lot of it goes on in the Thunderdome, that a lot of it is broadcast. Like let's just really hype this up. This is kind of, Poker's version of March Madness, Poker's version of what was the very successful, very popular national heads up poker championship that we saw on NBC for a couple of years coming out of Caesars Palace. Turn this event into that one. And I think you've really got something going here. And of course, the Poker Players Championship, just absolutely legendary, the 50K buy in. I just want the series to focus on making things very friendly to the outsider who comes in, who wants to watch their favorite player and doesn't have to rely on a random table draw. I know it's hard. I know their attendance is just absolutely through the roof. But on these prestigious events, let's really cater to them, build some extra fan sections. Like, let's go all out as far as the promotion of this 25K event. Is I concerned. think, uh, Jeff, to echo your point, because I agree with it, uh, with the heads up especially, is just turn it into the NBC National Heads Up Championship like we all loved back in the day. But uh, make it bigger, make it better. You have mm -hmm. Maury Escondani, the man behind, uh, behind the NBC Heads Up Championship. So he knows what to do. He's got the formula. And uh, I agree. Set a room aside. Get the heads up tables there. Do something fun. Make a, a party atmosphere for the draw. You know, where people yes. are drawing the heads yes. up matches. And, uh, yeah, I agree that this has the uh, – they, they have an opportunity here to make this a very special event, to make it a very special way to kick off the 2020 WSOP. And hopefully, you know, it gets a lot of the fanfare that it should. But, uh, you know, time will tell. Because th theoretically, you're going to have the field set the night before. Sure, you'll have the 25K going on earlier but the final table will be the day of the heads up so you're gonna have your field set i believe this will be capped probably by may 30th so you could have a, a draw party and i think that would really hype things up um for this event so that covers the high roller series chad you touched on it briefly what do you think about this quote unquote value menu at the world series as we saw last year the world series starting to incorporate buy-ins that are not just one thousand dollars but one thousand dollars and under so on this calendar and you can check out the wsop schedule on poker news and on their website you're seeing events that are eight hundred dollars that are six hundred dollars that are five hundred dollars your thoughts on these you know i love them as somebody who spent a lot of the time a lot of my career covering the mid majors you know, I know the atmosphere, the hunger there are for events like this. There are players who are based, you know, all around the country, all around the 
world who are going to be more excited about these tournaments than, you know, the high rollers we just talked about, just because they can't play those, they can't mm-hmm. afford those, whereas they can actually afford to play the value menu, if you will. And uh, so I'm a big fan of the way they've uh, really emphasized this and kind of slapped a, a special name on it and are promoting it in the way that they do. Yeah, same here. I, I like it. I just think it, it draws in, it, it, it grows the game when people who are just learning the game can maybe come fire a World Series event in their very first summer. And how cool is that for them to be a part of this World Series of poker because they can fire this $500 freeze out. You know, it's one bullet for them. It's one bullet for everybody. They come in, they can say, they can tell their friends they got to go to Las Vegas. They got to play a World Series of Poker event. I'm all for it, of course, in moderation. And I think that the World Series has done a very good job of that so far from what we've seen in the schedule, especially, Chad, when it comes to reentry. So many of these events, it's one reentry max or one reentry per day max. And I, I really like what the series is doing. Chad, do you like what the series is doing in this mystery bounty event it is a fifteen hundred dollar buy-in one million dollars guaranteed in bounties bounties being of all different price points most of the bounties are going to be worth one hundred dollars but you have some special bounties that are worth more you have one very special bounty that is worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars I'm excited about it. And early indications from what I've been seeing on social media and talking with colleagues is they're excited about it too. This seems to be the event uh, that's been announced that is getting the most chatter and the, you know, the most traction on social media. So in that aspect, it's certainly working wonders. And we chatted a little bit with the WSOP officials about this tournament, uh, you know, as reporting it for poker Mm -hmm. news, we want to know when these bounties are being awarded and, and how that'll be done. And, and, well, the bounties have to be cashed in at the cashier or claim there. They're going to do some sort of special ceremony where each of these bounties is revealed. I don't know the mechanism yet or the details on it, but I know that it's in the back of their mind that they have to do something and they're going to work on that. So I expect details on that in the coming months. And uh, it's just going to be fun. You know, like it could yeah. happen. You play the first level and bust and somebody could win $250,000 bounty <laughs> in the first, first 10 minutes or something. It, 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 that would just be incredible. And, and imagine if this tournament goes late day two, early day three, and nobody's won the 250K bounty yet, and how, va- how much more valuable each little bounty becomes. It's just a, it's a fascinating tournament to me. I love how the World Series continues to try new yeah, things. All right, Chad, you are off to a World Series of Poker Circuit event. Hopefully, you can do as well as either Lytle Allen did or Aaron Gamino did. Lytle Allen takes down WSOPC Horseshoe Tunica main event. He takes home more than $144,000. And your casino champion is Aaron Gamino, who won one ring amidst multiple caches. He has two World Series of Poker Circuit rings. Uh, so pretty good turnout in Tunica, I guess, Chad, as expected. Yeah, Tunica actually has always traditionally drawn well for the circuit, draws from a lot of the Southern crowd. And looking over the winner's list, some familiar names there. Blake Whittington won event number two, a $400 no limit tournament for almost $20,000. I think it was his sixth, maybe seventh ring. Michael Leck, who seems to be winning a ring every other stop. He's, <laughs> and he's, I think he's got nine now, and five wow. of them have come from different continents which is a a circuit record. And then uh, a guy, shout out to Sam Washburn, took down event number Oh, yeah, with the stash, right? Yeah, with a big old stash. He was fresh off winning the uh, Run Good Poker Series Mm. at Hard Rock Tulsa. So that's where I got to know him. And it came two years after he won the WSOP Circuit Tunica main event. So uh, I got an affinity for Sam because when you look at the guy, you think, you know, Oh, here's just another wreck that I'm going to run over. But man, Sam's, <laughs> Sam's obviously got some chops. Um, also, shout out to a really stacked final table. Scott Stewart finished in sixth. Greg Jennings out in eighth. Kyle Cartwright out in third. Brian Pacioli, the czar, out in second of the main event. Chad, you mentioned Run Good. And I would like to encourage everybody to check out Run Good Stop in San Diego coming up on February 18th, the 18th through the 23rd. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it. It's their first time on the West Coast. And it's just, it's just a great time. They have uh, buy-ins ranging from $135 to $575, a, a lot of money up for grabs, and, and just a, a fun spot to be a great environment. All right, Chad, as we wrap up here, 
who you got in the Super Bowl? Do you have the Chiefs or do you have the 49ers of San Francisco? Well, before I reveal my pick, let me just say that I'm very excited about this Super Bowl. The Green Bay Packers did come up one spot shy, mm. disappointed in that. But I do feel that these are the two best teams in the NFL of the respected, uh, co- uh, respective conferences. So I'm just very excited. I think they're two high-powered teams. I think it's going to be a great game. And honestly, probably the Super Bowl I've been most excited about in the past 10 years or so. And with all that said, I've got to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. There it is. The yeah. Chiefs of Kansas City for Chad Holloway. And Mahomes is just uh, a beast. You know, one of my favorite players in the NFL. I just like their team. And uh, I think they're kind of due. You know, it's been a long time since they've won a Super Bowl. Um, Andy Reid needs one of those uh, rings on his fingers. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. They just uh, – I hope they get it done. All right. You've got the Chiefs. And, Chad, I really think I'm going to go – against the grain against you and go with the San Francisco 49ers have been super impressed with them throughout the year. Not that I haven't been impressed with the chiefs, of course. Um, What I do really like though, Chad is one prop Jimmy Garoppolo over 19 ish completions. I think after last week's or the week before against your Packers, everybody's kind of panicking like, Oh, he's just never going to throw the ball. I think the game will play out a little differently. I think there's a little bit of extra value in that over. Uh, completions and that that tip chad is free of charge no tout service here our gambling selections uh come for free what what are your plans for the super bowl so you're either going to play uh day two of this circuit event or what yeah i want to be at the final table of that circuit event but if i'm not my friends do host a super bowl party so i will Hmm. go there have some drinks have some food and uh, you know gamble a little bit we like to put some prop bets on uh, you know, I bet you this uh, kickoff will be returned for a touchdown, Love that it. sort of thing. So, Love it. The props are out for the Super Bowl. Best of luck to everybody who is firing that. I will be stuck with uh, Brent Hanks for Super Bowl Sunday as we prep for Super High Roller Bowl Australia. You can catch the Australian Poker Open and Super High Roller Bowl Australia on Poker Go. Well, thank, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thanks to our friends at Run It Once. Special shout out to the Phil Galfon Challenge which you can check out at twitch.tv slash run it once. For our friend Sarah Herring, for Chad Holloway, I'm Jeff Platt. And as Sarah would say, deuces.